Why do you think Mew 3 doesn't exist in the games? It also transitions to a- Wait. Exist in the games. Oh my- Guys, this song is perfect. Oh my god. Guys, I'll be honest with you. I don't think I've ever gotten this lucky with a song. Because now I can move this over. Oh my god, bro. This is just- This is just magical. Look at this. In the games. He's dead. Emphasis. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I love editing. This right here. That right there is why I love editing. Test, test, one, two, three, one, two, three. I don't know about you guys, but I love behind the scenes content. I love any piece of content that shows me the workflow, shows me the strategy, shows me the efficiency that leads up to a product that I enjoy, whether it be movies, gaming, YouTube videos, whatever it may be, I love seeing that type of stuff. And today, I'm gonna be giving you guys that exact same experience right here, right now, with how to make a Poketuber type video, how to make a collaborative Poketuber project we're gonna be going through every single step from recording editing rendering uploading every single process along the way uh, in order to make an episode one singular episode of the Pokemon Sword and Shield cage lock whether you're an aspiring content creator who's trying to learn the basics to get into this type of stuff or you're already a content creator and maybe you just want to learn like the spicy little sauce that I put on top of these videos or maybe you're a viewer who just you know is curious and you want to figure out what actual work goes into every single one of these episodes that you guys see in your sub feed well you're in luck. This video is for you. So definitely go ahead, strap your seatbelt in, hit that like button. And just so you guys know, this is a spiritual successor to another video I made about three years ago uh, titled How I Make My Videos. And that video, uh, while still a very good video that still holds up pretty well, that video is definitely outdated in a lot of ways. I've learned so much over the past three years uh, that I cannot wait to share with you guys in this video. And also on top of that, if there's something I do not cover in this video, if you guys want to go ahead and drop a question down below, I'll definitely go ahead and do my best to help you guys as best I can. But uh, with that out of the way, let's get into it. Wait, 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 Frank, you forgot something. <laughs> you forgot something. Um, also, if you guys want to go ahead and watch the completed episode that we're going to be making in this video, like the completed video, it's actually already up on the channel. It went up yesterday. So definitely go ahead and give that a look if you guys are interested, if you guys don't want to be spoiled on the series. But anyways, all right, now you can go. Bop. As you guys can see, this is what my monitor looks like when I go to record a collaborative project. I have my gameplay off to the left here. I use it as a preview. This is what I'm actually looking at when I go to record the video. I have my stopwatch program right down here, which allows me to make timestamps throughout the video uh, for when certain exciting things happen or like edits need to be made, like layout changes or intro moments, which I'll be going over all of that when we actually get to the editing portion. We have uh, one instance of OBS here for the gameplay. So this is recording the gameplay, literally just full screen, full quality. And then over here we have the face cam which is being recorded full screen as well now the reason why i have two instances of obs open uh which by the way in case you guys don't know obs is a fantastic software for streaming and recording it's free i'd highly recommend it i'll go ahead and drop a link down below if you guys are interested uh but anyways the reason why i have two of these scenes open is so i can separate the files out i want to be able to have my face cam full quality and the gameplay full quality and so when i go into post i can mess with them individually without having to worry about them all being inter twine. Another thing to keep in mind is Dylan at the same time has this sort of same setup as well, where he's recording his face cam separately, his gameplay separately, and uh, everything is just kind of individual. So we end up with four separate tracks at the end of the recording process. Face cam one, face cam two, gameplay one, gameplay two. The way we're able to see each other and talk to each other is actually through Discord. So we literally just open up a Discord call. I have uh, my Discord usually on this monitor right here, which you guys can't see, but I tr trust me, it's there. Uh, and then we just screen share right? So I just share my screen. He can see me. I can see him. We can talk to each other. It works. So when it comes to audio, things get just a little tricky. On my side of things, uh, as you can see here, I'm recording my microphone right here through the main mic input. And that's the only thing I'm capturing through the face or the only thing of audio I'm capturing through the face cam file. Over here, I'm also recording my microphone, which is allowing it to sync the two files together. So even though I end up starting these recordings, these two recordings at different times, the fact that they're both both picking up the same microphone, if I clap, 
then I can see that clap in post and I'll be able to link them together based on that clap. Now here's the confusing part. So Dylan is also doing the exact same thing that I'm doing here. He's recording his microphone. He's also recording um, his microphone through his gameplay file so we can sync his face to his gameplay. Now the problem lies in trying to get the game audio to be recorded as well. Because the problem is if you enable a desktop audio capture right here, um, yeah, it'll pick up the game audio, but it will also pick up Discord audio that's coming in from the call. The Discord call audio is lower quality, so obviously we just want to keep the game audio and not the Discord audio, which means we need to find some way to separate the two. We actually all do this differently, but for me, I use a program called Voice Meter. Now, I'll be totally honest with you guys, I don't know how this works. <laughs> at all like no freaking clue i followed a tutorial uh in order to get this set up to the point to where it works for me but uh, if you guys are also having the same issue where you need to separate the discord from the game audio and just have one of them be picked up by obs then uh, i'll go ahead and i'll link a tutorial down below that you guys can follow if you guys have seen the sword and chill cage lock i'm sure you guys know this but dylan is the one that handles the game audio on his side so typically i don't have to worry about it i'm sure you guys could tell but this process definitely is not perfect by any means it's just kind of the way that i do it and the way that i've learned to do it, uh, but there are still obviously ways we can be more efficient. Now let's go ahead and I'll show you guys my actual recording settings here. I'm not going to go super in depth, but long story short, uh, this is generally what I do. I record to my F drive here, MP4 format, NVIDIA NVENC H.264, which basically means that it's using your GPU to encode the footage instead of your CPU, which is typically a lot more efficient. Uh, a 15,000 constant bit rate. And I, I was actually, it's funny enough, I was looking at the, uh, the old How I Make My Videos video, and I had this. I had this bitrate set to like 40,000. Like it was insane. I'm so sorry to anybody who copied those settings. 40,000 is ridiculous. It's actually kind of insane. So I wouldn't recommend that, uh, especially if you're uploading to YouTube, because I think YouTube caps the videos out at like 8,000 kilobits per second anyway. So it's like, if you're, as long as you're uploading above that, then you should be fine. When it comes to audio here, I have everything running through my mixer. So my computer sounds go through my mixer to my headphones and my microphone obviously goes through my mixer. So I have my desktop audio and my mic both set to my mixer there. When it comes to video output, 60 FPS, 1080p, you guys already know the damn drill. These other recording settings aren't typically a huge deal. Um, you can set your process priority, which basically just shows like how much priority your CPU puts on the software. Uh, but uh, if you guys really want to dive into it, you could definitely find a lot more in depth tutorials on YouTube involving like that sort of stuff. But it, for the sake of this tutorial, it's not really necessary. So once we're on Discord, we're ready to record. I go ahead, I hit record here on my face cam. I start the stopwatch here at about the same time. That way they're more or less synced up in editing. So when I make timestamps, I'll know about where they are in the video. And then I click the uh, record button on the gameplay as well around the same time, just so it's pretty easy. Then from there, I'll go ahead, I'll make sure my mic is recording on both these. I will clap to obviously sync it up, make sure I can do that in post. And then from there, we record the episode. It's that simple. Test, 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 test. one, two, one, two. I got a, um, I got a pepper jack cheese stick. And I'm very excited about it. I'm so happy for you and your cheese stick. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I spent so much time trying to set up the behind the scenes stuff. I didn't even like bother to eat. <laughs> so I'm just, <laughs> I'm just hungry. Frank, if you need to eat, we can sit here. No, that's fine. I got a cheese stick. I'm chilling. Okay, Dad. <laughs> I thought you were talking to me as I was drinking the water. I was like, thanks, son. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. I have nothing to beat this Metagross. I'm looking at my PC. Whoa, Frank, a time lapse? Okay. All right, son. So while we're time lapsing here, let's go ahead and answer some of your questions on Twitter at Asteroid Videos. This is a good question. What do you like to eat or drink during recording sessions in between recording sessions? I'm hungry and need suggestions. I know you like string cheese, anything else? So typically during recording sessions, I try not to eat uh, really at all, just because when I'm eating, I obviously can't commentate. Uh, when it comes to drinking though, I'll typically go for water or lemonade, or I'll go for G Fuel or sometimes coffee really just whatever i'm feeling at the time did i get did i get something what did i get i hate i actually hate everything let's go yo yo this okay should i use my master ball on it when making a let's play video how do we keep an audience tuned in even when we are constantly talking and what are some tips for making middle edits so besides obviously wanting to have interesting conversation and wanting to have that conversation go throughout an entire episode uh you also want to make sure when you're talking about the conversation that you are enunciating your words you want to make sure that you are fluctuating your pitch and also just making the, your voice 
interesting to listen to, if that makes any sort of sense. And this is something that is really hard to teach. I'll be honest with you guys. Um, with me, it's kind of just come like from practice. But clearly, I'm sure you guys could assume uh, this is not the way that I normally talk in my everyday life. Like my recording voice is very different than my grocery store voice. You know what I mean? Um, and so you really just have to kind of focus on making your uh, conversation interesting, making your voice constantly have uh, highs and lows, and just making everything sound interesting. With mid-edits, just do your best to be creative, uh, enunciate the kind of stuff you're trying to enunciate, and also uh, try not to overdo it. That's actually something I've fallen into before, is like over-editing a video to the point to where it actually detracts from the video. So definitely look out for that. Oh my god! Oh! What's up, Dad? How you doing? Yo, Dad! I've never seen that before, even when I played before on this uh, randomizer. He's so, so big! Cool. He's so freaking what big! What do you do to make thumbnails more clickable and pop out more? And any tips on how to keep your viewers engaged and videos and streams not exactly about how you make your videos but i'd appreciate any advice you can give either way if possible uh so when it comes to thumbnails a lot of the times you know you just want to make sure that the colors pop you can increase brightness and saturation a little bit just to make sure everything pops out uh, another thing that i do to make thumbnails pop is you guys might have noticed i have a white bar at the top of most of my thumbnails and the reason why i do that is because i like to overlay things on top of that bar while keeping the background in the distance that way it kind of looks like in on some devices at least it kind of looks like the thumbnail is popping out into the menu UI of the uh, YouTube app, if that makes sense. You can do stuff like that and also try to have a uh, like a thumbnail style that you kind of stick with throughout all your content. That way, if people see your thumbnail, then they're able to recognize, hey, that's a, you know, that's an asteroid thumbnail or that's a Ryan thumbnail. They can kind of just tell from a first glance. When it comes to keeping viewers engaged with our sort of content, I think it just kind of comes down to having really good commentary, making sure that people are thoroughly uh, invested in the content, whether it be the game or a story you're telling or whatever it may be, you just want to make sure you hook people in with like a bit of a, uh, a tease or a promise and then you kind of fulfill that promise by giving them something that is actually worthy of value, whether it be entertainment or informative content or just uh, an enjoyable, chill time, whatever it is, whatever it is that you kind of tease them with, just make sure you come through with it. The editing portion is not only the longest part of the process most of the time, uh, but it's also honestly my favorite part of the process because it allows me to be even more creatively expressive. It allows me to take the raw footage that we recorded and tinker with it and mess with it and just turn it into the final product that I want you guys to see. So today we're going to be hopping into Adobe Premiere Pro 2018, which is something different compared to the previous video that I posted here on the channel. The previous How I Make My Videos video, actually I was using uh, HitFilm Express back in the day. And just so you guys no, I do still recommend HitFilm Express. It's a great free video editor, a great place to start if you guys are looking to get into video editing. However, Adobe Premiere Pro is the industry standard. It is easily uh, the best editor I've worked with. And while it does have its issues, um, overall, it's freaking amazing for our workflow. And it works really well with what we try to do here um, on the channel. Anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and hit new project here. And uh, as you guys can see, we're prompted with this window here. We have name, location, basically where you want your project to be saved, uh, general scratch disk, and ingest settings. Now, the only thing you really have to pay attention to here is like your scratch disk, as well as the location of your project, and of course, the name of your project. So for the name, we're going to go ahead and name it Sword and Shield Cage Lock Episode 10, because that is the episode number. I like to keep things nice and orderly. Uh, with the location, I'm going to go ahead and save it on my G drive, which is my external SSD, you want to try and save this on a fast drive. And the same applies to your scratch disks here as well. It's not a necessity by any means, but if you want to improve performance, you can put these scratch disks on a faster drive on a faster SSD, or even giving them their own dedicated fast SSD um, is really, really smart if you're like really serious about performance. So let's go ahead and okay here and load up the sequence settings. Actually, no, not really sequence settings, but just the windows here. Now, the way I have my Premiere Pro laid out is super weird. I know. <laughs> I know it's super duper freaking weird. If you guys are opening a fresh copy of Premiere Pro, odds are you're not going to see it like this. It's going to end up uh, being a more traditional window format or workspace like uh, something probably like this, right? Where you have your timeline at the bottom here. You have your program monitor here as well as your source and effect controls up here. Um, I know it's super weird the way I have mine laid out, but the reason why I like it is because I removed basically anything that wasn't a necessity for me and I also made it to where 
where my timeline here is very tall and wide. I love having a tall timeline. Uh, and this just kind of comes down to personal preference. You can control and customize all of these windows and move them around and even delete uh, certain ones that you may or may not want. So basically, uh, I'd recommend, you know, once you kind of get into the groove of things, you can kind of customize it, figure out what you need, figure out what you don't need, and figure out what sizes work best for your workspace. But this is the layout of the panels that I use. So up here we have the media bin, which is where your media resides. It's where you're able to import your files, such as your videos and audio, and you'll be able to pull from there uh, to actually edit your video. Right here we have the effect controls. This is where all of your audio transitions are, your video transitions, all the uh, video effects here, such as, you know, cross dissolve and blah, 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 blah. All the, all the stuff you want to throw on your clips, that's all right here, as well as presets as well, which we'll get into that in, the, in a sec. The next thing here is just my toolbar. Shows all the different tools you got access to. Pretty freaking sick. We got the timeline here, which is where our clips are actually going to reside. We're going to be placing them together. Going to be freaking awesome. Over here, we have the audio meter, which kind of just shows your audio levels, uh, which is really helpful to look at. We have the program monitor, so this will be where your video actually shows up, right, when you go to actually play back the clip. And then right here, we have the effect controls, which is where you can customize and add uh, parameters and change the parameters of all of the effects over here. So long story short, the first thing we need is obviously the footage. So we're going to go ahead and go over to Google Drive here. Uh, we do use Google Drive when it comes to transferring files. It works really freaking well. And because um, obviously I recorded my own files here, I have them in this folder. Uh, now the only thing I have to do is download Dylan's files. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Also in this Drive folder, Dylan sends me the updated layout uh, Photoshop file. So basically all of our layouts are in Photoshop. They're all in a PSD format. So basically after Dylan's you know done editing an episode, he'll go ahead, he will save his PSD, and then he'll throw it in the Drive for me so I can download uh, what it looks like at the very end of the previous episode so it stays consistent with the start of this episode. So now that we have the layout opened up here in Photoshop, as you can see, we have uh, blank spaces for the gameplay and then the face cams here, as well as all the layers over here which showcase the team slots um, and, uh, you know, the badges and all that. So all of this can be customized and changed, obviously, because we got to update it for the actual video. So the way we do layouts is we literally just save PNGs of every new layout change. So starting off this episode, nothing is going to be different from the previous episode. So we're going to save this current form of the layout as a PNG to my hard drive. As you can see here, we have 20 various layouts that have been made throughout all of the episodes that I've been editing of this series uh, so far. And so basically every time we make a layout change, we just save a new picture, a new PNG um, of the updated layout and then we throw it into Premiere. Now it's important we use PNG because the PNG file format allows for transparency, which we're gonna be putting this layout, which you guys will see in the video editor, but we're gonna be putting this layout above everything else and then throwing the gameplay and the face cam beneath uh, in these little squares. So now that we got the layout all situated, let's go ahead and get the footage in Premiere. First and foremost, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my little timestamp thing here. This is a screenshot of the timestamps that I took in the episode using the X note uh, stopwatch app that I showed you guys earlier. So we're going to have that pulled up here. Those are just my timestamps. Now, usually Dylan also has timestamps to give me, but for this episode, he actually had none. <laughs> so this is actually going to be uh, a pretty easy episode. We only have three different edits here that we have to make. Uh, and then obviously an intro moment and, you know, all like the fine tuning and whistling that we got to throw into this. So, so we can just drag and drop this footage in, or we can go ahead. We can hit control I uh, to import while clicking in the media bin. So let's go ahead and just grab that real quick like episode 10 we're going to import all of this now we're going to make a new sequence which actually and i have to tell you guys something about this um i have a lot of my hotkeys set up on my elgato stream deck here um so if you guys like see actions happen without me really doing much it's because um i have like stuff that i use very very frequently like new sequence um i have nesting which we'll get into that later as well um play pause like that sort of thing i have a lot of these kind of built into my stream deck which just makes it easier to do these types of hotkeys really fast. Anyways, all right, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to name this Sword and Shield Cage Lock Episode 10. As you can see, we got a 1080p 60 uh, custom sequence, which is just something that I made myself. You can make uh, your own sequence through, um, you know, basically the sequence creator here, and you can save them as presets. So we have uh, 60 frames per second, 1920 by 1080, which is the resolution we upload to, uh, square pixels, blah, 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 48,000 hertz, whatever, whatever, maximum render quality, blah, 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 blah. Okay, sick. Awesome. So yeah, we're going to hit OK. If you guys want to copy that, you guys are more than welcome to. Now, the actual timeline here opens up with however many tracks, I don't feel like counting, uh, eight. <laughs> it says right there. Eight tracks and then uh, five video, or eight audio tracks, five video tracks. So you guys can see here, 
when it comes to Premiere, um, you have your video tracks up here and then you have your audio tracks down here. Right, so they're completely separate from each other. Now, what I like to do when I start off a project is I like to add uh, just a bunch more tracks, just because I just I like to have room when I'm working. You know what I mean? And I also like to make the audio tracks uh, a lot bigger. And the way that I'm making these bigger is I'm hitting Shift and then I'm scrolling down with the mouse key. So I typically make. Uh, the audio tracks about this big and I make the video tracks pretty small. So now we're gonna start with Dylan's game We're just gonna drag that in there. We're also gonna drag in Dylan's face cam now as you can see uh, The way Dylan records is freaking whack <laughs> Super freaking whack, bro. His gameplay has three different separated audio files um, And I'll be honest with you guys it, the way he has this set up in OBS I have no clue how to do it. <laughs> I, I still I still have not figured out how to do this in OBS uh, But Dylan does it. It's how he's able to separate the game audio here, which is right here. This is going to be the game audio file. So if we just play this, you guys can hear that's the game audio. Um, right here is going to be, I think, his commentary. No, so I. Nope, that's me. Yeah, I, uh, I never used to buy cheese. So this is the Discord audio uh, that's also being recorded, and that's how we are able to sync up our files because he's actually he's recording his Discord and he's recording the gameplay. The good thing about how he has it set up though is that they are on different tracks, so I'm able to properly, you know, delete the Discord after I'm done syncing. Now with the face cam file, it's just his face cam and then his commentary here. So to make this a little easier to see, only the red track are actually what I'm going to use because we have the game audio here we got the uh, gameplay here and then we have the face cam here and then we have his commentary file here um, all of these are kind of just extra but they're still used in order to sync everything together so starting off here we need to sync uh, all of his files to themselves so basically we have to sync all of his stuff together and then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna sync all of my stuff together and then we're gonna sync them both together so it's a bit of a process but I promise it sounds more confusing than it actually is so starting off here we're gonna sync his commentary to his face cam as you can see we uh, start off the episodes with a clap here so Dylan goes ahead he claps now sometimes OBS uh, desyncs the clap a little bit as you can see the sound is here but his hands are nowhere near each other. So typically what I have to do is I'll find the frame, which by the way, I'm going frame by frame by using the arrow keys. And I'm also, I'm zooming in and out by hitting the plus and minus buttons. I go frame by frame here and I find where his hands touch. And then I just drag his actual commentary file over. But anyways, we got the S click tier. So it's only going to play this track. Let's just go ahead and see and make sure it's synced. Okay, so now we can go ahead and we can delete this sort of useless track right here. We don't really need it anymore. And uh, if you guys are wondering how I'm changing the color of these tracks as well, I do like to color code my clips as I go through just so it keeps me more organized. Uh, you can just right click, go label, and then you can pick a color from here and it'll change to that color. It is, um, it's actually really freaking nice. <laughs> Dylan's face and his commentary are synced. Now we have to sync his gameplay to his commentary. As you can see, we have the claps in this file as well. So we're just gonna drag everything and line it up like that. So now everything on his end, at least, should be synced. So we're going to delete this. And now if we play back the video a little bit. Point of dinner time. You gotta wait a little bit. All right, here we go, baby. There's Come a on. lot of Rhyperiors, which don't really help me. So yeah, as you guys can see, um, the gameplay is synced. His face cam is synced. If you listen to this back. Exclamation point, exclamation point. Low tad. You see? So now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to trim up the uh, the files here. So we're just going to select them all by clicking and dragging. And then we're going to hit Control K, uh, which basically will just split all of them, all the clips you've selected. It'll just split them all right at the playhead here, which is how I prefer to cut. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can go about this, right? Like a bunch of people prefer to use uh, like the razor tool here, which allows you to basically click and just make cuts that way. I actually, I find the razor tool very just finicky though. I don't really like using it. So Basically, every cut that I use, I am making at the playhead, which I know is weird. I'm a weird editor, I know. Um, so anyways, now that they're selected here, we're just gonna hit delete, get rid of them. Awesome, now everything has a nice, fine edge. We're also gonna go ahead and just move these tracks up, just so everything looks nice and orderly here. Another thing that I do to speed up the process is that Control K shortcut that I just showed you guys. I actually, I have it paired to a macro on my mouse here. So every time I click this button, if I go ahead, let me just, let me just show you guys real quick. If I select all these and then I just hit the button here, 
you see it'll do that click or do that cut um, automatically. And that's something you can set up depending on the mouse you have. If you have these extra buttons on your mouse, odds are you can go into your mouse's software and uh, change them to be commands uh, or uh, keyboard shortcuts. So basically every time I just hit the button, it just does control K for me without me actually having to go for control K. It's just faster. It's easier. It's more efficient. Now it's time for my face cam and my gameplay. Now, normally my face cam and my gameplay is actually easier uh, than Dylan's, but this is, this is a little wonky simply because of the fact, um, that I was trying to prep the footage to make this video that you guys are watching right here. So I do apologize. It's a little more confusing than what it normally is, but long story short, right here, we have my face cam with my commentary. Uh, I don't record my commentary separately. As I showed you guys earlier, it's just face cam commentary right here. And then we have my gameplay here. Uh, which is actually recording. It's recording my mic and it's also recording the discord. I usually only record my mic because that's really all I need uh, to sync my face cam and my gameplay together. But I was recording the discord too for the sake of this video. So it's kind of jank, as I said, kind of a little bit weird, but we're going to roll with it. So long story short though, the concepts uh, are basically the same. I'm going to start with my face cam here and I'm going to line it up with the clapping noise, because as you guys can see, this is where the sound kicks in, and my hands are nowhere near each other. So we are going to go frame by frame. We're going to unlink this footage. I actually haven't talked about that yet. Unlinking is just separating the video and the audio tracks from each other. So right here, uh, when you import it by default, they're kind of they're kind of together. Like you know, if you if you if I do this here, if I select one, the other one gets selected. Um, you can see that right here, but if I go ahead and I select it, I hit control L, it'll go ahead and it'll allow me to move them individually, which is what we want. So we're going to drag this back here. As you guys can see, if we just do this, Awesome. Perfect. Amazing. So now we just have to find those claps in this. And normally, as I said, it'd be a lot easier, but because I was recording the Discord, it kind of makes this tough. So we're going to go ahead and find it in here, though. This is about where my first clap is. Take the TR, and I've learned that, oh, you can only... As you can see, if you focus on the claps, they're basically synced up. So now we can go ahead. We can just remove this audio entirely, and I'll go ahead. I'll trim, I'll trim out all this, because that's obviously not necessary for the video that was for this video and now we gotta sing them together so we're gonna drag this baby over here right on top of dylan's and now we have to line this up based on this audio here so as i said this audio right here is uh the discord audio it's temporary um i'm literally just gonna use it to sync up my audio here to dylan's audio um so there we go awesome and now if we just play these two it's more or less together this meta gross. I'm looking at my PC. So now we can delete this, which is lower quality audio. Uh, so we can just, you know, get rid of that. And now this is basically the episode. The episode is synced hundred percent. If we go ahead, we play this back. The commentary should sound normal. Probably not a good Bolognese for me, you know? You know what I just uh, realized? If we don't do the cage match today, I'm actually, it's not too bad because that means I get to look for EQ again. Now it's time to put these timestamps into here. Uh, we're gonna be marking them in the footage. That way it's easy for me to see where they are or where they happen in the episode. And also if I do a physical marker in the footage, if I move the footage around, uh, that marker will stay in relation to the episode. So it's not like that's gonna get desynced. So long story short, what I do here is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put it uh, all the footage here back to the start. And the way that I just did that is I just deleted the blank space that was here. If there's a blank space, and Anywhere. You can click it, hit delete, and then all the clips will get kind of smushed together. So that's pretty cool. We're going to go ahead and look at these numbers here. We're going to type in 1246 into this uh, bar up here. That'll allow me to move the playhead at that point. We're going to click on my face cam and hit the M key, which is going to, as you guys can see, put a tiny little marker there. So now this marker is where this timestamp is going to happen. And even if I move this clip, Right? Even if, if this clip gets freaking yeeted all the way over there, that marker will still be there showing me when this moment is in the episode. So I don't have to worry about um, keeping this, the footage exactly where it is. Uh, so it's really freaking nice. Let's go ahead. We're going to put in the other ones here as well. So now I got the three timestamps in there. And if Dylan had timestamps, I would go ahead and I would do the exact same thing, uh, putting them on his face cam, just so that way I can tell what timestamps are his, what timestamps are mine. So now I just make sure the audio is balanced. Uh, a lot of the times I have to make a couple adjustments here. So like I added like one decibel of gain to Dylan's audio here. Uh, so that kind of works out. And I think the game audio should be good as well. Let me just double check. Lucky egg held item. Yet I can't even get EQ. <laughs> no, literally, dude, it's an all it's an all you can eat buffet and I'm the freaking I'm the freaking server. Awesome. I don't know what that line was. 
<laughs> I'm the freaking server. What am I talking about? Ah. So long story short, I'm gonna input my Lapras logo thing, which you guys will recognize as this. Uh, I'm also going to import my outro, which my outro is actually pretty complicated. Uh, I'm actually really, really proud of it though. So I'll go ahead, I'll show you guys that here momentarily. We're gonna import that. And I'm going to import my transition pack, which basically these are stock transitions that I got online. If I can find, I don't know if I'll be able to find like the exact link, but if I can find something similar, uh, something comparable, I'll definitely link it down below. But basically what these are, are these, these are basically just a bunch of presets that somebody sold online. Um, it's a bunch of different like glitch and zoom and shake transitions that you can drop and drag into the timeline. Um, and they come with sound effects and they're really freaking great, honestly, especially for uh, making really efficient edits. So you guys can go ahead and see all of that right here. All right, awesome. So let's go ahead and put these things in the layout. We're going to drag the PNG above everything else here. Uh, and we are just going to make sure it's lined up. We're going to drag it out, uh, hit the save button, which by the way, save is control S. Um, definitely make sure to save frequently because Premiere Crash is too much to not <laughs> do that. So just make sure you stay on top of it. So there we go. It's going to take a while to save just because I imported the transition. The transitions are super freaking boggy. Um, and then we're going to come down here to the effect controls. Now, this is where presets make a huge difference. I'm going to go ahead and type in Sword and Shield right here. And as you can see, we got Sword and Shield Cage Lock Dylan Face, Sword and Shield Cage Lock Dylan Game, etc., etc. So now if I take these presets and I just drag them onto the, the file that they respond with, as you can see, boom, <laughs> it's it's instant. It just goes straight into the layout. Now, when it comes to what these presets are, um, I'll go ahead and try to explain them relatively quickly here. But as you can see, boom, awesome. Everything's in the layout. Everything's perfect. That, that looks like a Sword and Shield Cage Lock episode, doesn't it? Um, but as you can see, if we actually click on the effect controls over here, uh, you can actually see what the presets are made of. So it's the motion adjustment, right? Which is actually adjusting the size, is adjusting the scale, which is the, uh, you know, the size of the actual file, is adjusting the position, which is where the, you know, file is. And then for my face cam, it's also adding a horizontal flip. Because uh, as you can see, the face cam, I normally look to the right or left, depending on which way you're looking at it. Uh, but I like to, and this is just like a preference of mine, I like to have... Um, uh, both the face cams looking inward rather than outward. It just kind of like, I don't know, just, I mean, having it flipped like that, I don't know. It just kind of, it kind of looks just a little weird. You know what I mean? I like for it to be very symmetrical. So that's just a personal preference. I like to flip my, my face cam like that. And then with the gameplay and stuff, it's basically the same thing. Just, you know, uh, scale and position to fit inside the boxes. Uh, and then we got uh, same thing for Dylan's face as well, except without the flip. Now, when it comes to making these presets, basically what you would want to do is you'd want to make all of your adjustments, right? You'd want to do everything to fit whatever you want to fit into that layout. And then you just want to go ahead. You want to click on the effect you want to save in the preset um, and you can click multiple effects. So you can hit control and then just click a bunch of them. And then you basically right click, you go save preset. You can go ahead and name your preset here and then hit okay. And then now that preset will be stored uh, here when you type in the search bar. So now if we play this back, library, we used to rent out uh, that movie and we used to literally watch it like every single time. So it's, it's both of like both of our favorites, you know? Yeah, it, it, it is. It is. Uh, this looks like an episode. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's basically done, right? No, <laughs> it's not. It's not. This is the easy part. <laughs> uh, we are going to start by adding the intro in here. Now, the animated intro, as I said, this would be all. This is a whole separate video. <laughs> like this is oh, this is a whole separate. Like we would be here for another four hours if I were to explain all of this. Um, but the animated intros, basically, I render them out as. Let me actually. I'm going to lower the volume on this. I, I usually lower it a couple decibels just because it is kind of loud. Um, I render these out as uh, MOVs, which basically means uh, that they are transparent at the black parts. So if I go ahead and I just drag, if I drag this under, you can see that in the, in the, you know, even though the animated intro is above, um, the files still show below, which is really freaking awesome. It makes for a lot of seamless transitions. Um, so that's why I render as MOV, but typically with these intros, it's pretty easy to actually get it in the episode. I just import the MOV file. Um, I go ahead, I actually unlink the uh, video and the audio here, and I put the MOV on the same track as the layout. Then I go ahead and I drag everything back like this. And now the reason why I'm doing this is because the layout actually has to come in a little later. And I try to, like, as you can see, the layout animates in. Um, so I want that animation to finish before I actually come in 
to the real layout. As you can see, I just added a cross dissolve here. And the way I do that is just by selecting the cut, hitting Shift D, that'll go ahead and add your, uh, your default transition in there. So basically, I want to fade out the intro after it's transitioned into the actual PNG layout. Um, and the, seamless, the most seamless way to do that is to just line it up here, add a cross dissolve, which you can see will just, you know, once it's done, it just transitions in. Uh, but except, you know, obviously having this look like this, you guys can tell. Hey guys, it's super jaggedy, right? Like it doesn't look good. So then what I do is I take all of the clips, the actual footage, and I will drag it uh, back to the first frame where you can actually see the clips. So if I go back here, um, let's see. I gotta wait for all that all that black space to be gone. Okay, so right here, right here is the first frame, as you guys can see, where you can actually see through the smoke. So what I do is I drag this here, and I want the audio to kind of come in at a good time after the music ends. So typically what I'll do is I'll have the audio come in right after the music here. I'll kind of line this up, and then I'll drag out the video. Just so that way it's more seamless. So now if I play this back, Hey guys, I have, as you can see, it looks a lot better because not only is it coming straight out of the intro, uh, but the audio also lines up with right when the music ends. I also go ahead and I fade in the game audio, just, you know, make it a little more, a little more seamless. So now, as you guys know, I always put this little Lapras logo um, at the beginning of all my videos. Uh, I just, I really like the way it looks, a little bit of a branding thing, right? And so what this file actually is, is it's kind of the same thing as the intros where it's just an MOV that comes up and then glitches out. So it's super simple, uh, it's transparent, which is really nice. So what I'll do is I'll put it typically, like I don't really have like a set plan with this uh, logo. I typically try to line it up with when the first person says, hey, welcome to the video, you know? Uh, that's kind of just a preference thing. So I won't, I won't put it in at the very beginning here. I'll probably wait to put it in when Dylan says, hey, welcome to Cage Lock. Hey guys, I have nothing to beat this Metagross. I'm looking at my PC. It's a, it's a travesty, quite frankly. Hi guys. So yeah, when he says, hi guys, I just think that's really funny uh, to have it line up with that. So that's typically, that's typically what I do. And like the timing of it changes depending on the video, quite frankly. Hi guys, I just spent two hours trying to get Earthquake, the TR, and I've learned that, oh, you can only get it from Watt Sellers. The next step on our list is just going through to our timestamps here, which luckily we only have three, um, and doing them. Typically an episode will have like, I don't know, anything from like five sometimes to 10 if we're feeling crazy. This episode's kind of an exception. There's really not a lot to do here, which is nice. Also, if you guys are having playback issues, uh, which I am because I'm <laughs> recording while I'm also trying to edit here. So this is not good for my PC, but um, you can also go ahead, you can go over here and just lower the uh, the playback quality. So if you have it on full, try dropping it down to a half and uh, obviously it'll play back in low, lower quality, but it, it should at least play back. You got the lucky egg held item, yet I can't even get these legendaries, you got the Master Ball held item, you got the luck. So as you guys can see right there, I go ahead and I switch out my Zoroark for Zarude. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to make cut there. We're going to delete the rest of the layout because we're going to have a new layout take its place and, you know, keep moving forward. So let's go over to Photoshop here. We're going to just, bop, delete Zoroark. Uh, go over here, find Garud Pokemon card. Easy. Let's see what we got. Let's go to images here. So because Garud is new, it's kind of hard to find a good design for him or find a good picture of a design for him. But this actually, that, that works. <laughs> that actually works. All right. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to paste it here. Uh, and now if I resize this, so now we're going to, of course, save this as a new PNG. Uh, we're going to add it to the folder. We're going to import it like we've been doing and keep moving forward. What we'll go ahead and do is we'll just uh, click there, hit control or no, hit shift D. That'll just go ahead and make the default transition, the uh, fade. Is on how not only are you getting these legendaries, you got the Master Ball held item, you got the Lucky Egg held And it looks a lot better. Let's go. All right, next timestamp. <laughs> he shot on your porch and you shot on his life. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, this is this is probably the intro moment. So typically with intros, um, especially lately, I try to make them as quick and snappy as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut out, not cut out, but I'm going to find this, the section, the time section um, of this moment. I'm going to kind of sanction that part out, copy it, throw it to the beginning of the video, and then we're going to uh, work on the intro moment at a later at a later point. So I'm gonna have to cut a lot out of this intro moment to make it snappy, but I think I'm gonna start it here. He shot on your porch and you shat on his life. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so that's actually the as you guys can see. This is a this is a what? About a minute long moment, a minute long tail. Uh, we're gonna have to cut that down to about like 20 seconds. <laughs> so, and luckily, I mean, there's a lot of fluff in there that I can cut. So basically, what you guys just saw me do is I made the jump cuts there, or not just just the cuts as I've been doing to kind of separate it out. Uh, I'm not gonna delete this footage though, because obviously I still want it in the episode. So we're just going to hit Control C, right, with that with that moment selected here, and we're gonna go back to the beginning, Control V. So now that moment has just been duplicated here, and then we'll actually work on the intro moment uh, momentarily. The playback is so garbage, but it's fine as long as I can hear the audio. Bye. Peace. Bye. <laughs> It's so booty butt cheeks. All right, so basically after my buy, that's where we cut it off. So we're just gonna go ahead and make a cut. It delete, select the files we don't want to see. Good stuff. Now here's the fun part. This is the part where I'm proud of, right? I'm really, I'm really proud of this part. So the way my outro works is it's an After Effects composition. It's an After Effects project file, and this project file is able to be imported into Premiere directly. And what's cool about Premiere, what's cool about um, After Effects and just Adobe and how everything's integrated, is whatever changes I make over here to this project file, um, if I have it imported as a project file over here, it will update automatically. So say for example, I just get rid of this text. I'm just like freaking screw that text. That text is freaking garbage. I come over here. Boom, <laughs> takes a second. Uh, but it will update automatically depending on whatever changes I make over here, which is really useful, especially because these names, right? All of these guys, shout out to all of you guys um, in the Mattress Master Squad. These names need to be updated basically every single video. I need to go in here and I need to update these names for more or less every single video. As you can see, I can uh, manually change everything with the text tool here. So long story short, because I need to update these names all the time, it's not very practical for me to update them and then make a rendered version of my outro every single time I make any slight changes. Um, what this allows me to do is it allows me just to import the composition itself, make the changes, and then not even have to worry about rendering a separate file every time I make anything slight because it'll just automatically update in here. So that's the benefit of, um, you know, making your outro or making something that you're going to have to change frequently in After Effects and then just importing the project file into Premiere because that way it'll just update depending on whatever the latest change is in here. So as you can see, this is also working like the layout where there's a transparent box here where the video goes. And typically what I do with the outro is I'll just, I'll put a split screen of our face cams in here. So I'm going to cut it um, at where the outro starts, which the outro is 20 seconds, which is the exact length of the end cards for a video, right? Um, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to cut the outro there, I'm going to remove the layout, the game, and uh, just basically leave our face cams here. I'm going to select both our face cams, I'm going to remove all of the attributes, uh, basically bringing them back to what they looked at, or what they looked like when we imported them. I'm going to go ahead and grab this vertical line uh, picture that I used to make like the split screen. So we're going to drag that over top here, as you can see the line is there. Now I'm going to horizontally flip my camera again and move myself over to the right here. There we go, so there we go, nice and clean, right in the uh, the right side of the screen there. I'm gonna add a crop uh, transform effect here, which is going to allow me to just quickly and easily just plop, you know, just do that, nice, simple. We're gonna move Dylan's face over here, kind of center it, just make sure everything looks good. Actually, I probably should move my face a little bit over there to make sure it's better centered. Awesome. Sick. And now we have this. Now I need to take these three separate files and put them into this layout right here. I need to put it in this tiny box. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and select them all. I will nest them, which I actually have a shortcut for on my stream deck, but so you guys can know, I'll go ahead and do it manually, which is control shift N, right? It'll pull up the nested sequence name. You hit okay. You know, I don't really, you know, I don't really care to name it. So basically what this has done is it has made another mini sequence within our bigger sequence. It's like, it's basically like imagine like a file folder, like a file manager, right? Where you have like the big file and you got all like the mini files below. Um, so what this has done is it has combined them into one layer, uh, one editable sort of clip here that we can just, you know, adjust on the fly. Um, and then if we double click on it, we can go in and we can see the individual parts here still in a another sequence. So long story short, nesting is really, really powerful. Um, and I, I can't really sit here and explain every single individual use for it, but just so you know, nesting is really good. <laughs> like definitely take advantage of it because there's a lot of cool stuff you can do by putting sequences within sequences. Um, so anyways, I have a preset here for outro screen, which basically just 
resizes it, puts it in the little box there. And now the outro is basically complete. The only thing we have to add now is the music, which I like to add some Persona music at the end because I freaking love Persona. Uh, and then I also like to add transitions here as well. So for the transitions, I'm finally going to open up the transition pack that I talked about earlier. We're going to go down to Glitch here. Uh, we are going to go down to bad signal and then number two. That's the one that I like to use. As I said, I can link these transitions down below in the, uh, or something similar to them. I don't know if I'll be able to find the exact one, but I can link it down below if you guys are interested. And basically what these transitions are is they're just um, adjustment layers, which basically applies effects to whatever is below it. So if you drag the transition on top and then you line up this cut with the actual cut, like what you want to transition between, um, then you should just have a seamless little transition here and it adds the sound effect as well which is really nice that's gross. gonna be matter gross is spill mm. would you look at that <laughs> would you look at that so now what i do is i go ahead and i add the same thing at the end here i think we're gonna go ahead and do this song from persona 5 which is a little bit of a little bit of a chiller chiller bop right we're gonna go and lower the volume a little bit Now what I like to do is I like to line up, and this is like a subtle thing that I, I just do. I don't know if anyone actually picks up on it, uh, but I like to like start off the outro on the downbeat of the song. So typically I'll find like where the song slaps, right? Which I think is like right here. Yeah, well, let's see if I can find something better. Right there. Yep, right there. Awesome. So I'm going to make a cut right there, and I'm going to line up that uh, drop, I guess, <laughs> with the transition here, just so it's perfectly seamless, hits on the beat. It's going to be awesome. Now, I got to lower this volume down to about probably negative 23 decibels. Um, I'm also going to remove the game audio during this section, and I'm going to drag out the music here a little bit just so that way it kind of leads into the outro. I'm also, I'm gonna add, uh, instead of a constant dissolve or a constant fade, I'm gonna add an exponential fade, which basically just, it just makes it a little more smoother. It like starts off slow, then goes fast, um, or starts off fast and then goes slow, other way. The constant uh, fade is more like, while this one goes like, which uh, it just, it just, I like it better. It's kind of a personal preference thing, but I like it better. So we're gonna do that. Yeah, and that's it? Yeah, well, yeah, Zerud and Lucario, I think that's basically it. So I mean I don't know how much I don't know how much help that's gonna be. Metagross is still mm, yeah. looking good. Metagross is gonna be really really solid for me, especially yeah. if I get TMs on him. That's gonna be nice. All right, next episode, find out what happens. We love you guys, and we'll see you guys then. Make sure you follow us on Twitter and Instagram at United Hayes and at um, Ashford Videos. We love. You. Okay, so now I'm going to cut the music off at the end here. I'm going to exponential fade and we're gonna drag that out a little bit. And would you look at that? Outro's done, awesome. So now everything is done except for the intro moment. And this is the part where it gets hard. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> I've been, I want you guys to know, I like the recording time right now that I've been working on this is an hour and 25 minutes. Um, and we're just now getting to the part that is uh, tough. So here we go. <laughs> if you guys have seen one of our videos before, you know this is definitely the most highly edited part of the episode. The most effort goes into the first couple of seconds here. This intro is gonna be interesting. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, so starting off here, we're gonna get rid of the gameplays because we don't need them. And I got rid of the layout as well. We're going to reset the face cams as we did before. And now basically what I do is I watch back this clip and I make cuts to kind of organize it. Uh, I cut out what I don't want. I leave in what I do want. And then I also kind of just kind of mentally map out what I want to do in my head. So I'm going to sit here, I'm going to watch this a couple times and we're going to kind of figure out what we're kind of aiming for with this. While also going in and making cuts, I do remove certain elements that I'm not going to need. Like I know, you know, when Dylan is talking here, we're going to have Dylan on screen. So I'm going to remove myself uh, just because I know I'm only going to need his face cam. Off camera setting up to record and the ghost horse was just like literally being the flying Dutchman in the air. Dylan also almost going to make that cut a little nicer. Do you consider yourself to have an editing style? If so, what is it? That is a great question. And yeah, I think I do have an editing style. For the most part, um, it's kind of hard to describe, but generally I think of myself as like a very smooth editor. You know what I mean? I try to make everything kind of tie into each other. Everything kind of flows as the video goes on. And then I'll end up using jarring cuts and jarring edges uh, more like, I don't know, hard, drastic edits to emphasize when I need to. So it's like, if you think about the video as like a river, um, I'll use like the jarring sort of effects as like these little rocks along the river to emphasize certain points. Um, so yeah, that's probably how I'd describe it. 
Okay, so now it has been compressed to 40 seconds. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> it's a big boy. I mean, you know what, man? I'm down. I'm down. But yeah, it's basically good to go. I cut out all the uh, unimportant parts, tried to make it as concise as possible. I also removed a lot of the extra footage uh, to kind of map it out to where, you know, who will be talking when and, you know, what we're going to show when that happens. Um, so let's just go ahead. Let's just watch it from the beginning and see what it looks like. We were off camera setting up to record and the ghost horse was just like literally being the flying Dutchman in the air. Dylan also almost lost the walk off camera. So that was kind of hype. Okay. <laughs> all right. Ex I almost lost a mon, but I didn't. No, I was no, very, dude. It was crazy, bro. Arceus came out of the woodwork almost destroyed his entire team bro coming out for new year's it was insane dude yeah, i can't even front it was crazy do you remember when mew 3 came out too and also shot in your porch dude why do you think mew 3 doesn't exist in the games he's dead <laughs> dylan killed him <laughs> <laughs> he shat on my no. porch i ended his whole life <laughs> he shot on your porch and you shat on his life <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's basically it um and you can also tell here well, I mean, you can see where I've made the cuts. It's like right here, 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 you know, etc. And one other thing that I want to point out is uh, when I did these cuts, uh, you can see how I've kind of overlapped my audio with Dylan's audio. Like it wasn't like that before. Um, and I think that's really important. I think it's it's in the in the biz. I think it's called a, a J cut is what the actual name is. But long story short, what I try to do to make things just feel like a cohesive conversation is I'll overlap my audio a little bit with his audio. Um, like here, you can see it when I made the cut there, like here. I try to just kind of make the audios overlap just a little bit because in a normal conversation when we're going back and forth, um, like I don't start talking right when Dylan ends. Dylan doesn't start talking right when I end. Um, when in a, in a natural conversation, like you kind of just pick up when you pick up, you know what I mean? And so when making cuts like that, I think it's kind of important to match the rest of the flow or else, you know, the whole thing is going to, it's, it's going to be very obvious that you kind of you, know, you pieced it together. Uh, but if someone watched this, like the goal is like if someone watches this, you know, without ever seeing the full conversation that's in the episode, then you would hopefully uh, be able to just take away from it that this was just one conversation with no cuts. Um, and it was just a complete throughput, you know what I mean? Which makes it funnier because it's just, you know, it's just one thing. Um, so at least that's the impression I try to give off. Okay, so now what I try to do is if we pull our Chrome tab back up here, I try to find a good song. A uh, good background track for the intros. I try to find something that just fits the overall theme I'm going with here. Um, and so the best resource I can recommend is the YouTube audio library. I think everybody has access to this, but if you just Google, like I just did, YouTube audio library, it gives you all of these royalty-free tracks um, that are so useful for background music. They're also really good for kind of setting a tone because what you can do is you can search, you can filter by mood. So if I go by mood, right? If this intro is like a very happy or if it's like a dramatic intro or I basically just pick the word that best describes the intro, like the overall mood. And for this one, I'd probably say they, they usually, for the most part, and this one is kind of under that umbrella, uh, but they usually fall under like funky, you know, funky or happy music typically works best because a lot of the times, a lot of these intros are just us being stupid, cracking jokes. Um, so I'll go with like a, a funky mood here. And then basically what I go through is I click through, I can, you can listen to them. Yeah, I, I think we got a winner. <laughs> Okay, I, I was kind of joking, but I'll be honest with you. I think that's the move. I, I think the first one we looked at is actually the play. I, I guess I just got really lucky with it. We'll see how it fits with the actual you know, intro. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but we'll, we'll give it a go. And if you guys have seen any of my videos, you guys know I always start off the video with this transition here. Now this transition, right? This slide up, let me just show you guys. We were off camera that, right? Um, these transitions are all a part of a plugin pack called Red Giant. So Red Giant Universe is a third party plugin that gives you all of these different effects and transitions and it's just a lot. <laughs> it really is a lot. We got all these video effects, AV Club, um, this sort of thing. We'll add like, you know, RGB splits, that type of thing. Uh, we got Ecto, which I'm sure you guys have seen like in my intros and stuff like that. So this is a plugin. It works with um, After Effects, it works with Premiere, and it gives you all of these just different craziness <laughs> honestly it gives you a lot of stuff to play with um so this stuff obviously is not built in 
to um, premiere normally. You have to pay for this stuff extra. It's about, I think, I think now, honestly, it's like 200 bucks a year uh, for this plugin. It's, it's ridiculous. I know it's actually insane, but um, I figured I'd let you guys know. I'll go ahead. I'll link it down below. If you guys want to give it a look, you guys might be able to get like a student discount. Um, if you're going to school, you might be able to get something like that. But this is how we get a lot of our uh, really solid transitions. So like this slide transition is a preset that I made that is from Red Giant. Um, and like, the, you know, obviously there's a lot of other ways you can do a slide transition. Like I'm not saying Red Giant is the only way to do that, but at least the slide transitions that we use, um, it's done through Red Giant. We're going to sync the downbeat of the song with the transition here. We were off camera. So let's see. You guys see that? It's just kind of nice, right? It's something like nobody notices this stuff. <laughs> like literally nobody notices it, but it's just, it's stuff that I put in just cause it's like, I don't know, man. And that, that's another thing, right? Here's like, here's like a, here's a tip, right? Here's a nice old tip. Um, the small details do matter, even though like nobody sees and nobody really notices like a lot of this small stuff that I put in there, all of these tiny things, they add up to make a much just like more flowy product, if that makes sense. Like all these tiny little things, it just adds to the cohesion of the video. So you guys may run into that type of stuff when you're editing where it's like, or really any creative work where you're just like, oh, like nobody's gonna notice these small details. Like why even put them in there? But, um, you know, a bunch of those small details combined makes a very cohesive product and they will notice that. So I, I, would, I would highly recommend uh, you know, putting that extra time and in, in work into that type of stuff just to make sure that you're, whatever you're making is, you know, uh, really nice. Bro, Arceus came out of the woodwork, almost destroyed his entire team, bro. Coming out for New Year's, it was insane, dude. Yeah, I can't even front, it was crazy. Do you remember when- Yo. Oh, yo, that trend, that, that just worked well. <laughs> that trend, listen to the song, listen to the song. Bro, coming out for New Year's, it was insane, dude. Yeah, I can't even- Dude, look at that. Look, that, I did not even try. I didn't even mean to do that. That's so perfect. It literally cuts to the clip right as that last drum beat hits. Well, it's close enough. But, like, look at it. Just listen to it. Insane, dude. Yeah, I can't even front. Insane, dude. Yeah, I can't even. But no, 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 no. Insane, dude. Yeah, I can't even front. That's actually, that is a really, that is a really subtle thing that was completely accidental, but I'll take it. Insane, dude. Yeah, I can't even front. It was crazy. I, I knew this song was perfect. So, let me adjust this a little bit. I'm just going to totally, I'm just going to commit to that, to that transition. But out for New Year's, it was insane, dude. Yeah, I can't even. Look at that. It was insane, dude. Yeah, I can't even front. It Perfect. Was crazy. Do you remember when Mew 3 came? And what, oh, what's actually cool too. Insane, dude. Yeah, I can't even. Okay, so what, what I can do, right, is since this goes pretty quiet, I'm actually gonna wait to bring the song back until I come back. Because th what that'll do is that'll, that'll emphasize Dylan's words here. Insane, dude. Yeah, I can't even front. It was crazy. Do you remember when Bro, <laughs> I knew this song was perfect. I love, dude, I love finding stuff like that. I love finding stuff like that when editing. I might, I might have to bump the volume of this a little bit, but. Insane, dude. Yeah, I can't even front. It was crazy. Do you remember when you, because I kind of, I kind of interrupt him. I kind of interrupt him. So the song coming in at that part actually works really well. It was crazy. Do you remember when Mew 3 came out too and also shat in your porch? Dude. Why do you think Mew 3 doesn't exist in the games? It also, it also transitions to a, wait. In the games. Oh my, guys, this song is perfect. Oh my God. I Guys, I'll be honest with you. I don't think I've ever gotten this lucky with a song because now I can move this over. Oh my God, bro. This is just, this is just magical. Look at this. In the game, he's dead. Emphasis. <laughs> Yo, let's go. This is why I love editing. This right here, that right there is why I love editing. It just, it just, it just is the cherry on top. It just, it takes this raw footage and it makes it into something that is just perfect. I just, I love it. Uh, should we have it coming in? Let's see, let's, let's test it out. He's dead. <laughs> Dylan killed him. <laughs> so I guess I could have the song come back in when my face cam transitions or I can have it come back in later. Let's see. Dead. <laughs> Dylan killed him. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, maybe when Dylan comes back in, let's Dead. see. <laughs> Dylan killed him. <laughs> <laughs> he shat on my porch. I ended his whole life. <laughs> <laughs> he shat on your porch and you shat on his life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's pretty good. Or, let's see. Dead. <laughs> Dylan killed him. I could have it come in when I say Dylan killed him. Let's see what sounds better. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan killed him. <laughs> mm, maybe, when he, maybe when I say kill, actually. <laughs> Dylan killed him. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> this is a massive pog. This is a massive pog. Go get some pogs up in the comment section. Dylan killed him. <laughs> oh my god. And this, the sound effect works so well. 
the pew. I I love this. <laughs> like I I I love how I I totally went from like tutorial mode to like nerd out mode. But dude, this is hype. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just add a couple of effects here. So let's see, let's see, how should we start off? Basically what I do now, right, is I, I go and I add transitions, effects. Because now we got the music, we got everything sick, we got everything cut. Now we just gotta add transitions, effects. So we're gonna start off here and just see kind of what I could do here to make this uh, interesting. What kind of PC do you have and what do you use to record? Also, how do timestamps work? Well, Devi, if you were paying attention, you would know we already answered two of those questions. Obviously, I'm kidding. But in terms of the PC that I use, uh, it's a Ryzen Threadripper 1920X 12 core 24 thread 3.5 gigahertz CPU, uh, one of the first gen Threadrippers. I also have a GTX 1080 Ti and 64 gigs of RAM. Okay, so I grabbed this clip of the Flying Dutchman, Literally right? Literally being the Flying Dutchman <laughs> in the air. And so I think what we're going to do is I'm just going to basically put the horse's face just like on top of the Flying Dutchman. What I can do too is I want to obviously add some movement to this clip. Setting up the recording, the ghost horse was just like literally being... So I think what I'll do just to keep it uh, nice and simple is I'm going to do just a simple uh, zoom in, right like that. And then we're going to add a little bit of a floaty shake. So you guys might be thinking, uh, Frank, you just kind of skipped a lot of steps there. <laughs> and uh, I totally did. Let me, let me go ahead and explain what just happened. So I have presets for a lot of like the simple... Uh, sort of like movements and effects that I do a lot and one of those effects is a zoom in so right here as you guys can see I'm actually gonna disable this shake uh, but as you guys can see in the effect controls down here we have one keyframe at the very beginning that uh, is at 100 scale and at the very end it's at 110 scale so in case you guys don't know what a keyframe is basically it just marks a point in time um, a parameter in time, I guess, and uh, it allows you to kind of create movement throughout your clips. So long story short, right, if I wanted, say I wanted, I'll do a little bit of a demonstration here. Um, if I wanted Dylan to move from like left to right on screen, right, I could go ahead with the position keyframes, you guys know position, you know, moves left to right, up and down, that sort of thing. I can go ahead and hit the little stopwatch here. That'll create a keyframe. So this is basically marking um, this, these position coordinates at this point in time. Then if I, if I move forward, and say I move it, right, wherever I want to move it, um, it'll create another keyframe automatically. And this is basically marking the new position at this new point in time. And then what Premiere will do is it'll fill in the frames in between. So now if I play this back, I'm recording the ghost horse, which it moves it, basically just fills it in. And uh, you can do more with keyframes, like you can right click and change uh, the ease in, ease out if you want it to be smoother. So if I go ease in here, um, and then ease out here, then it'll look a little nicer. Setting up the recording of Ghost Horse was just, you know, and basically what that does is that's editing the velocity of the clip. Another thing you can do if you're more advanced is if you click this drop down arrow right here, it'll actually show you the velocity graph of these keyframes. And basically what the velocity graph is, um, is basically just a fancy way of saying like, like where does it move fast? Like at what point is it fast and slow then fast and slow? Cause it basically, it has to get from point A to point B. Um, within this set amount of time, but you can control at what point it goes faster and what point it goes slower. So that kind of is visualized with this graph here. So you can see if I drag these handles, it'll make this hill a little taller and then it'll make this line a little flatter. This means that it'll start off the movement by going fast and then it'll slow down as it uh, gets over here. So if I play this back, setting up the recording of ghost horse. Hopefully you guys can kind of see that. If I do it in reverse, it'll do the opposite. Setting up the recording of Ghost Horse was just... You see? It goes fast at the end there. Um, so basically, you can... By using Velocity, you can have, like, more control over just, like, where and how, like, smooth your keyframes are. Um, this is super important with After Effects um, and with Intros. But obviously, we're not getting into that today. The other preset that I have is the Shake preset. Now, what this is, this uh, effect is actually a part of uh, the Ignite uh, hit film pack. So if you guys know the editor hit film uh, that I talked about earlier, uh, they have their own sort of plugin pack that you can use in other editing softwares. I'll go ahead and I'll link it down below. Uh, but this shake effect is a part of Ignite, which is their sort of presets. And uh, the reason why I still use it is because I carried it over from hit film and it's really freaking great. But long story short, uh, what you can do here is you can customize the amount of the shake, the speed of the shake, the smoothness of the shake. So this shake that I have applied is a very gradual sort of like camera movement is what I like to call it. Um, so it looks very, you know, slow and steady, but you can also, if you want to get freaking crazy, you can go like this and suddenly your, your footage looks like this. We were off camera setting up the recording of ghost. 
<laughs> so yeah, you can you can get crazy with it. Um, and a lot of the times, this effect is how like you know we do the normal like the the crazy shakes. It's also how we do like the spinny shakes. Uh, there's a lot you can do by adjusting the parameters and that effect. Um, in case you guys don't know what a mask is, basically it is like a little cropping mechanism, I guess, where you can kind of sh like control what is being shown and what is not being shown. Um, so long story short, I want to basically crop this horse to where it's it's only showing the head because uh, I don't want to keyframe anything else. I basically just want to put his head on the Dutchman's body. So we're going to go ahead. We're just going to create a really rough outline here around his hair, uh, kind of like that around his body. And the rest of him is transparent, so we can just bring that over there. Sick. Awesome. Look at that. Now we can also, if we want to make it look a little nicer, we can feather it out uh, with this option here, which basically just adds a little bit of a uh, edge here, or a little bit of a lack of edge, I guess. It just kind of fades out the edge, which makes it look a little nicer. Right now, I need the horse's head to face the other way uh, because obviously the Dutchman's looking the other way. So what I'm gonna have to do here is I'm gonna have to nest this, but before I do, I'll show you guys what happens if I don't nest it. If I just apply the effect, um, the mask will stay where it is, um, as you guys can see here, it's still there while the picture is being flipped. So that this is one uh, of the many benefits to nesting. If you nest it, everything gets combined. You can throw the flip on there and boom, it does exactly what you want. So now we're going to get, go ahead. I'm going to keyframe the position here. I'm also going to increase the scale. Just kind of put him over the Dutchman's face. It's going to look really dumb, <laughs> but that's kind of the point. You know what I mean? There are definitely easier ways to do this. Like there's tracking you can do in After Effects. Uh, but for this type of simple edit, um, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to keyframe the positions basically every 10 frames to stick with the Dutchman's head. So I'm going to create a position keyframe here. Now I'm going to go left five frames of this spot um, by hitting shift and then the left keyboard. Right, so as you can see, it moved our thing back uh, five frames. If you want to go individually, you could just, you know, hit the uh, left and right keys respectively. So as you can see, if I'm here and I'm here, the Dutchman's head has moved, but the horse's head is not. So we need to line the horse's head up again with the Dutchman's. So we're going to go back again. We're going to do the same thing. It's going to keep creating keyframes down here. And now if you kind of look at this, it, it very loosely follows him, right? It's not perfect, but I'm not really going for perfection here. A lot of this is really trial and error. You guys are just going to kind of have to go with whatever um, feels proper, I guess, for the edit you're trying to make. It really is a lot of experimentation. Um, but that's also, that's just what editing is. You know what I mean? It's a creative form. You got to just be able to experiment, be versatile with it and uh, just make whatever adjustments that you think are, are fit. And also like, you know, a lot, the, a lot of the reason why I'm able to do this quick is just cause, you know, I, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time now. So like being able to like, kind of just, you know, estimate what'll look good, what'll not look good. That kind of stuff just comes with time. Um, so, you know, you guys, if you guys are like trying to get to that point, you'll definitely, you'll definitely get there. It just takes practice. And, you know, as I said, experimentation. Um, okay, so his head stays still for the rest of that. So that actually works out. So if we play this back. Flying Dutchman in the air. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dutchman in the air. I'm Dutchman in the air. It kind of looks I'm like. Dutchman. It looks like. Okay, you guys see that? The head is getting thrown a little too fast. So I'm going to create some keyframes in between here. I'm actually going to add a little bit of just. Uh, I don't know. Some sort of shake here as he blows. So I'm thinking like. Right, right here when it like kind of cuts. I kind of want to just. I want to mask that cut with a shake. So I'm going to keyframe the amount here. We're going to increase this up to like 50, something like that. I'm going to go a few frames before. We're going to set this to zero because I want the shake to kind of just come unexpectedly as he does like the uh, the action there. Then I'm going to come a couple frames out here and uh, lower it back down to zero. So now it'll it'll literally it'll spike up as he blows and then kind of ease out as he stops. Dutchman in the air. Dutchman in the air. You see that? I also want to go ahead because I'm feeling crazy. I'm going to add a zoom blur as well. Uh, which, in case you guys don't know what zoom blur is, it's um, literally exactly as it sounds. It just goes, you know, it basically just zooms out from whatever point you decide. So I'm going to sync this up, as you can see down here. I'm going to sync up these keyframes with the shake effect here. So we got zero strength. Come over here. We're going to bump this up to like, yeah, 20 or so. That'll probably be fine. I'm going to make sure that uh, you can go over here. You can change center. I'm going to make sure that this center aligns with like the mouth. 
of the Dutchman. I feel like that makes the most sense because that's where the sound is coming from. And then we'll go uh, forward here as well and we'll bring it back to zero. So this should cause a shake and then also a zoom blur, which will just add more emphasis. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of a transition here. I just wanna add like a little VHS thing. Uh, which the VHS transitions are also a part of Red Giant, just so you guys know. But what this will basically do is it'll just make it go like that. You see? Kind of cool. The only problem is, though, without a sound effect... The Flying Dutch... It's kind of... It's kind of lame, right? So let's go ahead and add a sound. Literally being the Flying Dutch... You see? It, it's subtle, but it adds a lot. Like, here's it without... ...being the Flying Dutch... Here's it with... ...being the Flying Dutch... You see? It, 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 you see? Sound effect... By the way, sound effects... Very important. Been in the air. Dylan also. So I think kind of coming off that spin transition, I'm going to have it kind of continue the rotation while zooming into my face just to kind of make things uh, a little more seamless. But I do I do want to put emphasis on the line that I say here. Lost the lock off camera, so that was kind of yeah, so that was kind of hype. I want to I want to put emphasis on that. So we're going to separate that out. And I think to make this even smoother, I'm getting a little crazy, but I want to just go ahead. I want to add um, a little bit of like a bounce in, if that makes sense. So at the very start, I'm going to have it go to 45. Uh, scale. We're going to go a little bit forward. Go to. F Actually, I'm going to go 35. And then we'll go 40. Just like right when it starts, it just kind of goes bump. You know, just to kind of emphasize that something has changed. So this should hopefully look all right. And Russ, that was kind of high. Russ, that was kind of. Russ, that was kind of. Russ, that was kind of. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, it's subtle. It's subtle, but I like Russ, it. that was kind of. Just adds a little bit. How do you make the transitions in your intro moment so smooth? I've been trying different methods, but it always comes out a little rough. The best advice I can give is just to kind of lean into whatever transition you're doing. So for example, if I'm going in for a zoom in transition, I typically have the clip before it also be zooming in and then the clip after it also continuing that zoom. That way it's one sort of consistent motion throughout. So as you guys can see, I continued the little spherical yeah, transition awesome. here. I also changed uh, this a little bit. I made it pop out instead of popping down. I just thought it looked nicer. Um, and then I also had this cool idea of like making Dylan's face cam in the exact same way that I have mine. So I did this transition here that comes over, which is a part of the transition pack that I was talking about earlier. Um, I set up his face cam in the same way. And then every time he like emphasizes a point, I have him kind of go bop, bop, bop until he's fully zoomed in again. Uh, and then it kind of just gradually zooms from there. So if you guys want to see kind of the keyframes I set up, um, this is what I got. And then I also, of course, went in and changed like the velocity and stuff like that. What's your process for keeping your time editing as short as possible? Well, typically I'll use uh, things like macros, I'll use keyboard shortcuts, and I'll also just kind of make sure I'm focused when I'm editing. I feel like that's kind of an obvious sort of answer, but like I typically try to put my phone away and uh, I, you know, try to close Twitter and don't really look at that type of stuff just so that way I can really focus in on staying in the flow of the video. So I added a couple things. Let me show you guys. But I didn't. No, I no, very, dude, it was crazy, bro. Our I kind of lagged there, but you guys kind of get the gist. So basically, uh, what I did here is I have those slide up transitions that I was talking about earlier with Red Giant. I have uh, the, the clip basically duplicated a couple times at different scales. So it's like this is zoomed in, and then it zooms out, and then it zooms way out uh, in relation to my words. And then this is just like a gradual zoom out. And then for this effect here, I added this phaser sort of effect. It has like all these little presets. Um, and I think this is actually built into Premiere. I, I don't really use it that often, but it's kind of cool for this sort of thing. Um, and I set it to underwater, so it'll kind of just sound a little like, woo, you know? It was crazy. Well, it's crazy. Crazy. I don't know. It's just kind of fun. And then uh, over here, I added a little bit of a twisty shake. And the way I did that is uh, if you bump up the amount, uh, the speed, and then if you go to individual controls here, you can turn off the X shake, the Y shake, and just do a tilt. Um, so long story short, X is obviously the X axis, Y is the y's Y axis. So if you put these to zero, then the only way it can shake is like a spinning notion. Um, so I added that. And then uh, the wave warp here is just for this sort of stuff. Um, you know, just gives a little bit of distortion in that keyframe to that as well. Crazy, bro. <sighs> I'm tired. <laughs> Why are there so many rendering issues when uploading content with everyone, and how does one fix those issues so it would upload? Um, I'll be honest with you, I have no idea. Render issues are very just random and sporadic. They happen at the worst possible times. Um, and I'm actually, for the most part, I actually don't have render issues super often at all. It's maybe like once every four months or so uh, that I end up running into one. So it's actually not that big of a deal, but when it comes to actually fixing it, typically, uh, re just re-rendering the video will end up fixing it or you know clearing the media cache and then re-rendering or uh even just taking all the files copying it into like a different
different project file and then rendering from there. That usually fixes it. So typically it's kind of just like one of those. You just got to reset it type things and it works. All right, guys, it's uh, 1.30 in the morning and uh, I made some more progress. Let's go ahead and see what we got so far. We were off camera setting up to record and the ghost horse was just like literally being the flying Dutchman in the air. Dylan also almost lost the walk off camera, so that was kind of hype. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ex I almost lost a mon, but I didn't. No, I was no, very, dude. It was crazy, bro. Arceus came out of the woodwork, almost destroyed his entire team, bro. Coming out for New Year's. It was insane, dude. Yeah, I can't even front. It was crazy. Do you remember? What All right. Um. Okay. It definitely needs some adjustment but it is coming together pretty well. So to kind of explain the little bit that I did here, which actually there's kind of a lot going on here. <laughs> I, uh, I'm i kind of going crazy with this one, but I'm definitely happy with how it's coming out. And so, okay, first and foremost, this definitely needs sound effects, right? And there's a couple of things I have to adjust here um, a little bit. Let me go ahead and explain just like what's happening here. So after this clip, um, I just got literally a picture of Arceus, right? And uh, you guys can see here as I go into these nests, uh, these nests upon nests upon nests. Uh, we have Arceus here, which is just, you know, regular old Arceus. I added an ecto effect on him, so it kind of uh, grays him out. And then it also adds like that red outline to him. So that's pretty cool. It also moves, which is really sick, but that's just one of the benefits of ecto. And then I have uh, the actual form kind of fade in here, right, without the ecto effect. But the ecto effect from the previous... Uh, Arceus is actually still there, just kind of behind him, so it still gives him that glow uh, while also being able to fill him in with a duplicate there. So we have that going for us. And then here I took Arceus and I just keyframed him basically coming out, uh, and then he kind of floats with the same camera float effect that we used earlier. Uh, then right here he tilts and zooms in just using keyframes once again. And then when he transitions out, it's actually not a keyframe, I just used a uh, slide transition. Um, or where is it? Oh, oh yeah, it's actually over here. Yeah, so I just use a slide transition to make him leave the frame. So that's all Arceus, right? And then over here, all of these like little light effects, right? So uh, once again, I'll link this down below and I don't know if I'll be able to find the exact one that I have, uh, but I'll definitely find something similar. This is uh, what we call elemental effects, right? And so basically if I go into this folder over here, it's basically just a bunch of MOVs of just all these different animations involving the elements, right? So you got debris, you got electricity here, uh, you have energy, this sort of stuff, right? It's all these like just quick sort of little tiny effects um, that all like add emphasis in a video. I use them in intros, I use them in, in edits like this all the time. So basically we have, let's see, we have like an electric thing here that comes out, right? Kind of like a portal. And then we have this thing here, it's like a spherical little, I don't know, just explosion. It just looks nice. <laughs> I don't have like a reasoning for it. And then he comes out and then those go away. And then this right here is actually, so this is basically a screenshot. Um, of uh of dylan's team i basically just went to his gameplay and i found just like literally just a single frame right of him just in his pc box and uh i'm a, I'm a little bit feeling a little cheeky here by integrating after effects so i actually made an after effects composition here too where literally uh and the only reason why i did is because this flame effect you guys see how it like burns up um this effect can actually only be done in after effects and so i basically i took that frame i made an after effects composition out of it um, and then I basically just added the flame effect here. There's actually, there's two effects. So it's the flame effect, which is right here. Um, as you can see, it's like this, it's called a CC burn, CC burn film, right? Which will just randomly kind of burn up the image. And then, uh, I also added an ecto, which will give that fire layer to the holes of the burn. So there's actually something burning the, the, you know, the layers as if it was like a, as if it was like a page, you know? And then I duplicated it to get rid of like the extra glow around the edges. Um, but yeah, so that's basically how I made this. And then of course, cause it's an After Effects composition and I imported it into Premiere, it uh, updates automatically here. Then to top it all off, I just added a little bit of a glow here, a little bit of a shake. What's cool about this is like following the basics that I kind of mentioned earlier, um, all of these more intricate effects are just piled on on top of that stuff. So like the, this like nothing new is here, if that makes sense. Um, like I'm still using keyframes, I'm still using effects such as Ecto. And I'm still, you know, using the slide transitions. I'm still using the After Effects compositions, like what we talked about with the outro. Like, basically, all of those small, basic things that I talked about earlier, um, this sort of edit is kind of like a combination of just a lot of that stuff coming together in a more advanced 
setting, if that makes sense. Um, so if you guys, once again, if you have any more questions, like specific questions, let me know and I'll definitely talk to you guys down below in the comment section. Um, but then over here, right? It transitions out. I have a little bit of a glitch transition. I got to add sound effects. And then this Arceus, um, I literally I just got PNGs off Google of like, you know, uh, New Year's stuff. And I just kind of put it on them. I don't know. I thought it'd be funny. So he comes up and then it zooms out. Uh, and then nothing new here. Just a casual zoom out. And then I uh, actually raised the volume of this beat that I, I, you know, I got really hyped about earlier. So it really, you know, hits when it cuts. And then I also Dude, gave the I same can't. zoom out to Dylan's face cam here. So now we only have this section left. Uh, I want to keep working on it and I'll get back to you guys when I have like new stuff to talk about. It's two in the morning, so I gotta kind of keep it down. Uh, but I think it's done. I think it's I think it's officially ready. So let's go ahead and let's watch it back, and uh, we'll get this thing wrapped up. We were off camera setting up to record, and the ghost horse was just like literally being the flying Dutchman in the air. Dylan also almost lost the walk off camera, so that was kind of hype. Okay, all right. Ex <laughs> I almost lost a mon, but I didn't. No, I was no, very, dude, it was crazy, quiet. bro. Arceus came out of the woodwork, almost destroyed his entire team, bro. Coming out for New Year's, it was insane, dude. Yeah, I can't even front. It was crazy. Do you remember when Mew Three came out too, and also shot in your porch, dude? Why do you think Mew Three doesn't exist in the game? He's dead. <laughs> Dylan killed him. <laughs> <laughs> he shat oh, on my no. porch. I ended his whole life. <laughs> he shat on your porch and you shat on his life. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> that's 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 all it is. Um, so I forgot exactly like what I've talked about and what I haven't talked about. Uh, but the gist of it, right? is I added a lot of sound effects, as you guys can see here. Stuff like the glitches uh, when this transitions in, stuff like the, uh, what is this? Yeah, like the party, the party blower sound effect. Um, I added like this little power up sound effect. Um, I added, uh, what is this? Oh, the crowd gasping. Yeah, so like a lot of like small sound effects like that can actually go a huge way in uh, and really selling the humor so I, i'd highly recommend if you guys don't like take advantage of sound effects definitely start doing that i also emphasize this note right here in the game which i mean yeah i kind of had to <laughs> i mean considering how perfect this song lined up with the pacing of the intro like for me to not emphasize that would be a freaking crime um so i kept it kind of simple over here just because i thought like i thought the more dry like and more cutty pace would probably be a good contrast because like here's like okay here's the thing right up until now it's been very like jokey 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 you know and then suddenly dylan just says he's gonna kill the guy he's dead so it's like i thought like to have a transition from like a because like obviously the edits over here have been very smooth um going from like a smooth sort of aesthetic to just very he's dead <laughs> dylan killed him it even shows on my face cam too like this zoom in is very abrupt dylan killed him which i thought was um i thought was just fitting honestly i think it's just a good change of pace so then over here i uh, you know added a couple teleport sound effects instant transmission um all this stuff is kind of just like you know same same sort of stuff just keyframes these transitions that i told you guys about um and then this so this was actually pretty interesting uh this was a pitch changer a pitch shifter uh which lowers the obviously pitch of my voice and then the studio reverb which just adds like an echo to it making it sound de uh, demonic uh they have a bunch of presets on here like great hall uh, is the one that i use which i think makes it the most echoey and it's just my favorite one so um it's definitely really really solid and then when it comes to the visuals i uh, i duplicated this face cam here and then i had it a shake here as well as chromatic aberration um as well as hue colorize which gives it that red tint um, and what's cool about this that I actually really liked is um, I kept the shake at 100% or at 100 throughout this entire clip. And then the cross dissolve combined with the layer underneath um, gives it like this duplication effect as it fades in. Because obviously the top layer is shaking around. Uh, so when it fades in, it's not exactly on top of this layer. So when it shakes... It gives off like this echo effect, if that makes sense. Um, so I was really happy with how that turned out. And then this is just a simple, you know, zoom in. Uh, Dylan's just happy. You know how it'd be. So that's the episode. 
like we're basically done. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to use uh, this tool right here, which allows you to select everything right of a certain area. And if you use the other one, you can select every layer that's left of wherever you click. Uh, super useful tool for making sure you're able to grab everything. So I'm going to go ahead and just select everything over here, the actual episode. We're going to drag it forward here. And now we're just going to line up the intro uh, with uh, with the animated intro and we're just gonna see you know where this actually works so let's go ahead and experiment a little bit here <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's pretty good. Sometimes I'll have to sit here and kind of mess with the timing because like, you know, you want the cutoff to the animated intro to be like punctual, you know what I mean? And you want it to be like on comedic timing. And it's really hard to like explain comedic timing. Um, I mean, that that's, I mean, you guys could tell that's a huge part of these intros is like just getting the timing right. Because a lot of the times, I mean, I'm sure you guys noticed from when I was doing the jump cuts earlier, but it's like, we, we almost, well, I wouldn't say almost, but like, it's like a 50-50 shot as to whether or not the the punchline actually lands because of like our timing, you know, like sometimes our timing is great and it's like, the, it just works and it's like awesome. And you know, the discord lag didn't mess with it. Like our jokes just worked. The other half of the time I have to kind of, you know, make cuts and adjust the timing of certain things um, to where like the joke really lands. And that, that also includes, you know, when the animated intro comes in. <laughs> so like, I think, I think that works. I think that's good pacing. Um, and that's it. We're done. <laughs> well, we're not done. We still have to render and we have to upload uh, and we have to do all that shindig. But for the most part, we are basically done. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go to the very end of the video here. I'm going to click O, which is going to put an out point right at my playhead. Um, then I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to save the project one last time and we're going to get this thing rendering. In order to export, you want to go ahead and just hit control M. It's going to pull up uh, this little export window here. We're going to go sequence in and out, which is going to just render the highlighted part that we selected by pressing O. I'm going to go over here, select H.264 as my format, because that is easily the best format to be uploading to YouTube. Um, so definitely give that a shot. We're going to grab my 1080p60 preset, which is what I use for all my uploads. I'll go ahead and show you guys the details of that right now. We got 1920 by 1080 square pixels, high 4.2 levels, 16 uh, bit rate, VBR one pass. Audio over here is uh, 48,000 hertz, 320 bit rate. Yeah, we're chilling, bro. We're mad chilling. So now what you can do is you can kind of scrub through here. And I like to scrub through and just make sure, like, I didn't forget anything. Like, sometimes I'll forget to, like, unhide a layer. Um, so, like, sometimes the face cam will be missing. And it's like, if you render it without the face cam, then you're just kind of screwed, you know? Uh, so definitely want to avoid doing that. We're going to go at the very end, just make sure the outro is included there. Let's go. It's a massive poggers. We're going to name the file. All right, now that that's all sorted, we're going to hit the Q button, and then it'll automatically add it to the media encoder uh, queue here, which in case you guys don't know, media encoder is like a separate program um, that is like dedicated for rendering um, and exporting files. What's really nice about media encoder is if your computer is good enough, you can actually edit in Premiere um, still while media encoder, which is, you know, a separate program, uh, is doing the rendering. So it's really, really freaking nice. You can also export directly from Premiere. Um, it's basically the same thing, but it's just having it separate uh, is, you know, convenient. All right, so now we have our media encoder queue up here. And what's cool about media encoder too is like the more files you add to it, um, like if you, if I opened up like another project right now and I did the exact same thing I just did where I, you know, went export and then queue, um, it'll actually just add it to this list. And if you hit play, it'll literally just go down the list. <laughs> um, so media encoder will just render, 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 render render just keep going until it's done all right baby we're in the end game as you guys can see we have the completed video file right here everything looks to be good the video looks good the audio sounds good i'm assuming that's like a low level type thing that's cool i actually um, have awesome perfect sometimes you'll get render errors where like it'll render all the way through but like one of the tracks will be missing like the game audio uh or one of the commentaries it happens semi rarely right like it's not like a super common thing but you always want to go ahead you want to check the file uh before you actually upload it just because like you know if you end up posting a video that's missing one of the commentaries then ew. so typically i like to scrub through just make sure everything looks good make sure the entire video is actually in here um it didn't get cut off or anything i also like to watch back the intro moment you know just make sure that's good go once i'm able to confirm that everything is good to go i'm going to go ahead and click up here go upload video and it's going to pull up the little upload screen here now this uploader has changed a lot over the past couple of years uh this is the newest version of the youtube dashboard and i gotta say i actually really freaking like it i like the changes they made it's a lot better now it's a lot more efficient we're going to go ahead we're going to
gonna drop in the file. It's just gonna start uploading it. There we go. Now I do have um, really good internet here at the apartment. We have AT&T fiber. So as you can see, this uh, this video, which is about 30 minutes long, should only take about three minutes to upload. Obviously, that is going to change a lot depending on your internet speed and all that. But especially considering how much I upload and live stream and stuff like that, um, having really good internet like this is super duper important. So it's something I put a lot of emphasis on. Um, and also, in case you guys are wondering if you guys are curious about the uh, the actual render time with the episode, I didn't actually talk about it earlier, but the render ended up taking about an hour, which is actually longer than normal. Maybe it's because I was like I started the render while I was recording already, so that might have slowed it down. Typically, my renders are about real time, if not a little bit longer, which that kind of time is to be expected considering the machine I have. Uh, and obviously, that just comes down to how powerful your PC is. So as you guys can see here, we have all these different boxes to fill out when it comes to actually getting the uploading going. We're going to go ahead, though, and come back to that later while it sits there and uploads and processes. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and work on the thumbnail. Now, a lot of the times I'll work on the thumbnail while I render, but uh, with the way I'm working on this video right here, um, I kind of had to wait till the render was done to actually start working on the thumbnail. And also, I'll be honest with you guys, I was up so late last night, I was ready to just knock out. So let's go ahead and get going on this thumbnail here. So when it comes to finding a good title or thumbnail for the episode, typically what I end up doing is like either while I'm in the editing process or sometimes even as early as the recording process, I'll kind of just think in the back of my mind and just actively keep a lookout for clickable moments in the episode. I mean, you guys have seen our titles and thumbnails. You guys know how we typically go about them. We take like the most hype and exciting part of the episode and we put it right in the forefront for you guys so you guys know exactly what you're getting into when you click. And also, of course, I mean, it's just common sense. The more enticing the thumbnail and the, the title is, the more people are going to want to click on the video, the more people are going to get invested in the content. So that's the overarching goal when it comes to these titles and thumbnails. Now, when I was recording and I was editing this episode, I didn't really have any uh, real ideas in mind for how I wanted to brand it. So what I've been kind of doing here is I've been going through and I've been skimming through the episode, trying to find uh, a moment that might be able to kind of work for this type of thing. And I've been writing down a couple notes here and typically I'll write these notes as I go through too. So I think out of these bullet points here, I'm probably going to use this one, this sort of theme as the title where I'm going to be like, should he use the master ball? Oh, you know, and then for the thumbnail, I wanted to put this screenshot, this really awesome screenshot of Eternatus um, in the wild area. It looks so damn cool. It looks so damn sick. So now that we have our screenshots in here, I'll go ahead and show you guys some of the simple tools that I use to actually make like the cutouts and stuff like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here, go to the quick select tool, uh, which will basically allow you to automatically kind of highlight general shapes and colors. And so if you take this tool and you kind of drag it around a subject, you can also go ahead and hit alt and drag to actually remove sections. But if you basically just go around a subject like this, like uh, I am with Dylan's fingers here, uh, you can go ahead and cut out any subject you'd like. The actual layout of the thumbnail is basically done. We got ourselves on the right and then the Pokemon on the left. Pretty simple. Uh, now we're going to go ahead. We're going to just brighten up some of the image here, add some like particle effects and just kind of make it pop even more. How do you make your layouts? So we obviously edit the layouts to put in the Pokemon and all that and update the badge count. Uh, but in terms of actually building the base layout, we don't do that ourselves. We commission people uh, like Guy, AKA LowZ98 is the one that made this layout and this series package. He also made uh, the background art as well as the logo art and all that. I think we're basically done here. The only thing I'm gonna add are these embers, which I don't know if it'll actually look good, but I'm just gonna try. And uh, basically what I'm doing here is I got just a uh, ember PNG right off Google with a black background. And if anything has like a solid black background, you can change the blend mode on it uh, to completely get rid of that background. So what I'm doing here is I clicked up in this little tab here and I'm just scrolling up and down with the arrow keys. Uh, to actually just get different looks here. I think honestly we could just roll with something like that It's very very subtle, but if you guys look in the background you guys can see like the particles kind of coming up uh, Behind like our backs and all that. I don't know. I just think it looks pretty nice So now we're gonna go ahead We are going to save this as a JPEG just cuz with JPEG files uh, Typically YouTube is just better about accepting them Sometimes the PNGs are too big and it's just kind of a, a mess honestly But I'm gonna go ahead and just save it as a JPEG. We're gonna name the sword and shield cage lock 10 and uh, we should should be good to go to add this to the episode. All right, now we're really in the final stretch. We're gonna go ahead and give it the title that I talked about earlier. As you can see over here on the right, I actually have a previous episode pulled up so I can kind of copy elements over from this episode into the new episode. The title's good. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna copy the description over from the previous episode and then change a couple things here. The first thing I'm going to change is the subscribe things here. For some reason, when you put like the at and then their username in the uh, descriptions, when you go ahead and copy the text over, 
whatever. It doesn't carry over, so I have to retype these out. We're gonna go at United Gamer, and uh, you'll know if it's actually working if it becomes highlighted here. Uh, and basically, what that'll do is it'll just put Dylan's link as well as my own link uh, in the description, which is pretty sweet. We have a previous video thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that link because obviously, uh, you know, whatever I put here is not the previous video anymore. So we're gonna go over to Dylan's channel, grab that link, and drop it in the description. Um, let's scroll down here. We have the tags now. Tags honestly aren't super important anymore. I mean, they literally say right here, tags can be useful. Content in your videos commonly misspelled. Otherwise, tags play a minimal role in helping viewers find your video. So tags used to have a big impact when it comes to videos. Now, not so much. Uh, so typically what I do is I just copy the tags that we have set from the beginning of the series and I just say we just put it in. <laughs> uh, monetize in all countries. Perfect. We're going to next. We are going to manage the mid rolls. So in case you guys don't know, when it comes to adding ads on a video, um, we actually can't control where the ads pop up, where the mid roll ads pop up in the video. We can't control like what the ad shows. Like that's not really something we can mess with, but we can show how frequently ads show up in our videos. Typically what I do is I do about every seven minutes, um, which I found to be like the perfect balance between, you know, actually making something off ad revenue while also not deterring from the actual video. Obviously you don't want to put just a crap ton of ads because if you do, then obviously watch time is going to go down because people are more likely to click off. Um, and also it just kind of digs into your content. So sometimes putting less ads almost leads to more revenue because more people are willing to give your video more time, uh, you know, because because there's not as many interruptions. So we're gonna go ahead and hit continue there. We got the after video and the before video pre-roll. We're gonna hit next. Uh, now here's where they have you rate your video. This is a new thing for YouTube. This wasn't a thing uh, until semi-recently. For the Sword Show Cage Lock, I don't really have to worry about much of this because we're PG and you know we don't talk about uh, any sensitive issues or anything like that. So a lot of the times I'll just hit none of the above. Um, however though, with Generation Race and with other projects, I'll have to click light profanity just because you know we do use the F word a lot. <laughs> and, you know, we swear and we're pretty crazy sometimes. But for this series, uh, I can just click none of the above and we're good to go. Now we're going to add the end screen, which are the cards at the very end of the video that you guys see that shows like, oh, you can click this to watch more. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so basically for this, we're going to go ahead and copy it from another video. I'm going to copy it from the last Sword and Shield episode. As you guys can see, it shows up here. And since I've already set this up before, um, the boxes already line up perfectly with my outro. So I'm going to have it set to best for viewer, which means YouTube will give you guys a video from my channel that thinks it best fits your uh, watch history. So basically this caters specifically to you guys. And then I'll also go ahead and link the latest and greatest playlist, which is just like a collection of uh, my favorite videos that I've been posting lately. So we'll go ahead and drop that in. Now we're going to add the II card. So in case you guys don't know what an II card is, it is right there. That little thing, right? Basically it shows uh, anything you want it to show. It can show videos, playlists, channels, links, merch, that type of stuff. Like the one that I just put up right there is actually to my own merch store, asteroidmerch.shop, baby. Definitely give it a look if you guys are interested. Uh, but basically, uh, you can have five of them per video. So I like to just kind of put them throughout the video, just kind of plug in uh, for whatever kind of recent stuff I'm doing. I don't really have a rhyme or reason to a lot of this stuff, but typically I'll go ahead, I'll put like the Sword and Shield playlist in there. I'll skip a little bit forward. I will put the Generation Race playlist in there. I'll basically just put uh, previous projects and basically any other videos or live stream series that people might be interested in checking out. Um, so it's, you know, it's pretty convenient. So now we're here on the final page. As you can see, you have private, which means only you can see it. Unlisted, which means um, if somebody has access to the playlist that this video is in, or if they're able to get the link from somewhere else, they can view it. Basically, anybody with the link can watch it. Uh, members only means that it is viewable technically through the link. It's basically unlisted, but there's a second um, sort of barrier, right, that checks to make sure if you're a member before you're able to watch it. And then public is just public. Uh, you also have things like premieres, which you guys may see us do, where it'll uh, basically showcase the video live and there's a chat and people can interact and do the diggly damn thing. We also have scheduling a video as well, um, which is really helpful, you know, for premieres and it'll show up in the sub feed and it'll be like, hey, like this video is going to drop soon. Hit that remind button. But I am going to go ahead and choose members only for this one. I'm going to put it out for you guys in the couch crew a bit early. And then later this afternoon, I'm going to officially go and switch it to public. But with that being said, that is it. That That is basically it. The only thing I have to do now is just make it public when I want to make it public. 
and we're good to go. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was an absolute blast to make. I had so much fun going in and just going over all these concepts with you guys. Uh, once again, if you guys have any questions, drop them down below. I would be more than happy to go ahead and answer them. And uh, also, if you did enjoy the video, if you made it this far, geez Louise, you're a freaking, you're a freaking maniac. I do appreciate that. I love you guys so much. Thank you all so much for watching the content. I know uh, the process can be pretty overwhelming at times, but uh, I really do love what I do. I love making these videos for you guys, and I wouldn't want to be doing anything else in the world. So I really, really appreciate you guys' support. Literally, all of this is possible because of you guys. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening. Um, definitely go ahead, you know, skim through this video, refer to different parts of this video if you guys want to double check on certain things and drop questions if you have them. And I will talk to you guys uh, in more videos and more live streams. I'll see you guys then. Peace. Bye.